Hey folks, in this video we're going to provide an introduction to analysis of variance, or shorthand we say ANOVA. ANOVA is a, essentially a generalization of a t-test in which a regular two-sample t-test we use to compare the means of two populations but ANOVA is basically the same concept, but applied to more groups. So instead of just being limited to two groups, like the two sample t-test, ANOVA can be applied to three or more groups. And just a quick reminder, the two sample t-test applies to independently selected samples unlike the paired test, the paired t-test. So that's what I am meaning here when we say three or more independently selected samples, so there's not a paired design going on. An analysis of variance test is considered a type of f-test because it utilizes a distribution called the f-distribution, kind of like the t-test, T distribution, but the F test, the F distribution is applied to all sorts of hypothesis tests that compare variances, analysis of variance. And actually, the regular old two sample T test is a kind of F test. Here's the a uh, test statistic for the regular two-sample t-test, and it compares in the numerator and denominator different types of variability. In the numerator, that is the difference in sample means, right? So that's the variability between groups or between samples. So that's one type of variability. And in the denominator, the test statistic here is the variability, right? We called it standard error. It is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And it has to do with S standard deviation of the samples, right? So that's the variability, what they call, within the groups. And those are two different types of variation. And because the test statistic here is a ratio of these two types of variability, it, in essence, is a type of F test, but I get away from myself here. For us, what we're going to do, we're not going to particularly focus on a lot of the computational details associated with ANOVA. There's quite a bit of them if you're doing it by hand. So I want to take a more conceptual approach, and we're going to dis discuss some of the more um, main points associated with ANOVA and hypothesis testing in general. A lot of the recurring elements is, are what we're going to focus on. So what do the null and alternative hypotheses look like in an ANOVA test? We're not going to do many computations, but I will want to show you this thing called an ANOVA table and how to read it. And in that ANOVA table is going to be the p-value. And we always state our conclusions using that p-value. So those are the main elements that we're going to focus on, and I'm going to show you how to do an analysis of variance in R. But first, I want to show you some conceptually based examples. So I'm going to show you some images here. Let's do a little thought experiment here. I've got some cases to consider, case one and case two. Now, what I've got here are theoretical data sets uh, treatment 1, treatment 2, treatment 3, and some response variables measured in each of those treatments. And I've got the raw data here because I thought that would be useful, but also the summary statistics. 
we always want the sample size, sample mean, and sample standard deviation. And I've even plotted these values in R because I think it's useful to see uh, a graphical depiction of this. And let's start with case number one here. There's just five values in each data set. And let's look at the sample mean of each data set. We've got 29, 25, and 20. Right, we, that's one of our measures of variability that we're going to look at in ANOVA is this sample mean in group one was 29. And how much does that vary from the other means in the other samples? 29, 25, and 20. So in a sense, that's like the between sample variability is looking at the change in sample means between. But that is compared to the within sample variability. And that has to deal with the standard deviations of each sample. And now look, those are pretty small standard deviations, right? I mean, look at the values in any one of these data sets. The range is what, from 19.8 to 20.2? It's a pretty tight range, so you're going to get really small standard deviations. And that's true for any one of these uh, treatments. In blue, that's kind of like the within variability. How spread out are these samples? within themselves. Now look at these samples. What do you think? Are they very similar or are they very different? Super different, right? If we were to use this data in an ANOVA test, or even if you ignored one of these samples and did a two sample t-test, your conclusion to the hypothesis test should be reject the null hypothesis because there appears to be a considerable difference in the sample means, which probably indicates there's a difference in population mean, or the data suggests that at least. Now, that's case number one here. Conceptually, we can see these three samples super different in that we would probably be able to characterize that difference in their respective population means. In case number two down here, I want there's some similarities between these two cases. Again, let's look at the sample means for case number two here. Same general setup, we've got three treatments. I've labeled them treatment four, five, and six this time. But check out these sample means. 29, 25, and 20. Aren't those the same as up here? When we do hypothesis tests, we want to infer to population parameters or to population characteristics, but that's based on sample data, right? We can't just look at sample means as the only indication. That's why we also look at the spread in those samples, the standard deviation. Now check out these standard deviations that I'm highlighting in blue. They are much larger than we saw in the previous example. A dozen, 18 or so. And look at the, this image that I've created. These three samples are certainly all different from one another, but they have a lot of overlap among them, don't they? such that the overlap is sort of given by that within variability, right? It's quite large. There's a lot of spread going on. And that big amount of spread makes the between variability, the mean of, let's see, treatment five here was a do 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 25. The mean of treatment four was a 29 and the mean of the last treatment six 20. These 
sample means do not seem that different, right? This between variability is not that great because that's in comparison to the within variability here. So if this was a data that we would use into an ANOVA test, our conclusion would likely be to not reject the null hypothesis. We haven't even talked about what it is yet, but hopefully we know what that implies, that there is not a difference in population means, and at least that's what our data seems to suggest. So our hopefully on a conceptual basis, we kind of know what's going on here. This is what the two sample t-test does as well, is it's comparing sample means between the samples, but relating it to the spread within the samples. So case number one here, this difference in the sample means seems really large because it is large with respect to the within variability, right? This pink, the change in pink here is large with respect to this blue bar. But over down here, case number two, the change in this pink amount is not that large when compared to how spread out this blue variability is. Even though in these two cases, they both have the same sets of sample means. 29, 25, 20, 29, 25, and 20. So what I would like to do now is actually show you this in R and show you that we, if we plug this data into R, then we would get a rejection. And if we plug this data into R, we would not get a rejection. So that'll be in the next video. And we'll also talk about the hypotheses for an analysis of variance test.